welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. Thanks for hanging with me on the channel, particularly my long-term followers. I've got a video for you here today that shows me doing what I call a transplant. Had customer contact me, has an old Seiko O23, has a 7S26A movement. And he had a request that I get from a lot of people and that is, Maybe I'm getting a little bit older or I just want the convenience of a little bit more modern movement with quartz battery replacement in it, but I've got this great case, dial, all this other stuff, hands, and I want a quartz movement in it just for that simplicity and reliability and accuracy, all these other things, which, you know, I'm a mechanical guy, but you know what, to each their own. And the Ronda 515 is one of the most common movements I work with. Tons of videos on the, swapping that into different movements, particularly the SKX 007. But this is going into a little bit of an older movement. Again, the O23. This was made in the 90s and early 2000s. That sort of time frame was eventually replaced by the Seiko 5. Why not, right? So that's what we got in this video. I'm going to have a lot of information in the description below. Check that out. Subscribe if you haven't. Click the like. If you enjoy the video, maybe even consider becoming a member. Regardless, check out my website, watchcomplications.com, where I have a lot of other information. And I also have a page and all the details on projects like this one and custom holders that I have created to fit particular movements to cases. If you're interested in ordering those, I've got forms and whatnot on uh, the website. All that information is in the description below. And there will be a lot of videos linked throughout this one, at least as many as I can do, which is five to other topics that I hit on as I go through this video explaining this process. And here is the watch in question. Doesn't have a bezel on it right now, but this is the Seiko O23. Like I said, it's got the 7S26 movement. Great little watch, nice and thin. But if you're gonna take a watch apart and swap the movement out, a lot of things have to go into consideration. Do the hands fit the new movement? Is the date window in the right location on the dial? The dial feet on the back of the watch? Is the height right for the stem and crown? All these things we're gonna talk about. I'll walk you through the steps that I did on this one. Some detail, not all detail, but those of you who watch my videos know I do get into the nitty gritty a little bit, so could be a longer video. I don't know, I haven't edited it yet at the time of filming this, but it'll be probably in the same vein as some of my others, but I can't wait to get this back to the owner. Uh, thanks Jay for letting me work on this project and hopefully you enjoy getting this back on your wrist. I'm just testing out a few little last things and it'll be back on its way to you. So let's flip the camera around and talk about swapping out the movements in this great little old Seiko. And I'll be zooming in and out a couple times, different views, but what you can see here is the original Seiko 7S26A that was in this O23 case. Here's the case back old watch, loved watch. They started manufacturing these in the 90s, and so this is an old watch. And then here's the replacement movement. This is the Ronda 515, simple basic quartz movement. You know, whenever you go about replacing a movement, a mechanical movement for a quartz movement, there's some basic considerations. Usually, anytime you have a mechanical movement and you wanna replace it with a quartz movement, there's space in the case, obviously, for it to fit, because quartz is gonna be a smaller movement. The bigger questions, start to revolve around, okay, how much space do you need to fill up with a holder around the edge to make up for that smaller movement? Where's the height for the stem location? Usually you have to have a spacer of some sort to lift the dial up a little bit more. These are things I talk about in a lot of my videos. Look at my Belova video where I did something similar. That was another example where I took the entire insides of a watch and moved it to a different case, more modern case that somebody wanted. But so we've got the size, the diameter of the movement, you've got the height, so the stems at the right location for the for the hole, and then you have something like the date window on the dial. Are the wheels compatible in the sense that if the date's flipping around that it's in the right location for the dial window? Feet locations, fitting the dial to the movement. Sometimes and usually I'll replace the dial feet uh, with new dial feet using soldering or epoxy. One of those processes, again, I got a video on that. Sometimes the situation dictates, and maybe in a watch like this where I use uh, something that's a little bit more temporary, but works fine and will work for years, like dial dots. So what I'm gonna show in the video is just my process of putting the watch back together. What I've already done behind the scenes is pick new hands. Again, big consideration for this kind of a swap the hand sizes are probably different from a mechanical movement to a quartz movement. 
And these old Seikos had what's called the Mas style, M-A-S uh, style hands. You can see the old ones here. They're upside down right now, but we have the second hand, which is actually the same size between the two movements, the 7S26A and the Ronda 515. It's a 0 0.2 millimeter uh, diameter for the hole. And then we have the old Moss style hands. And what I had to do was figure out, okay, with the client, what's a hand style that you think looks good and matches and feels right based on the movement it's gonna fit on. Gives it a little bit close to the original, a little bit of a unique look. So picking out the hands that will match on the watch. And then again, what I do is creating the custom holder and spacer that will hold the new movement inside of the original case. I'll also clean up the case a little bit. So what I'm doing in this video is my process of putting it back together. I've already done the drafting work and everything for creating the custom holder. Again, I got tons of videos on my channel for that. What I wanna do now in the video is kind of show everything coming together. The case had been opened several times. The dial's a little bit dirty. I'm gonna walk through cleaning up the dial. Harder to do on a glossy dial like this old Seiko. Has this loom that looks wonderful. It's a light green on this one, very light green. Can you find hands that have that same sort of loom or do you replace loom on some hands that you can find? Put everything into the case, get the dial situated on it, get the hands on it, and then we can work on talking about the, the stem because the stem is also something that's completely different. Different movement, different stem. You gotta trim and cut the stem, bringing together all the little things I do and all these different videos I have across the channel and showing you what I really enjoy doing uh, for a customer. By the way, here is the old holder around the 7S26A movement. You can see it's the black component, plastic, that held the movement inside of the case originally. And here's my new one that I reconstructed to hold the Ronda 515. Holders take into account things like the interior dimensions, diameter of the case, stem location, and locations on the movement that might have gaps I can use so that it doesn't want to twist or rotate as you screw down the case back, giving a little bit pressure points on the case back. You see the little nubs on top. A lot of things I put into a custom holder design just to make it as suitable and as robust as possible with this kind of a conversion. Again, I'm trying to show as much as possible on this video, you know, and the lighting may be okay or not okay, but you can see the dial feet locations going right here next to the 10 at the moment and over here between the 25 and 26. Usually I would readjust the dial feet on the back of the dial, but on this particular build, and I don't know if this was because of previous work on the watch or whatnot, but there are no dial feet on the watch. And you can see all of the glue locations that are holding on all of the loom markers. And it's not a super flat dial on the back and I didn't want to mess with soldering on this as well. Again, working with this upside down on, on a glossy surface. And we've already got the, the adhesive going on in the back. What I've decided to do here is put down some dial dots in those locations. And dial dots aren't my common go-to. You know, they're kind of like for an older project like this, my older project on an older watch like this, they can be a reasonable solution. I tend to reapply actual dial feet, but this is just a situation due to the extra height on the back of it, the glossy dial, and the movement that I'm using, that a dial dot it will be appropriate uh, to, to put this in the case and it'll keep it in place. It's not gonna be an issue, right, as the person wears this watch at all. I'll have to put them on here in a way in which they don't interfere with the holder, but also that they don't interfere with the date wheel, and that's gonna be my next step. When it comes to dial dots, a lot of times the diameter is a little bit bigger than what I need. I'm actually gonna use an X-Acto knife and just cut it in half and then just use half. That's gonna look and operate a lot better than having these bigger circles that are kind of going beyond the boundaries of where I need them to be on the movement. Okay, so just to show what this looks like, I've cut basically a half moon. I'm gonna lay it over the top of the movement in that location where the dial foot is supposed to be. It doesn't have to be perfect. What we want is some stickiness in that location. Just a little bit of stickiness just to help the dial stay in place once it's applied. And you could put a few of these around. I might put a couple of them around uh, just to make sure that the dial stays where we want it to stay. You can kind of see the locations where I've removed the paper from. I went ahead and did it on the four sides on this example. 
it's not a path I go very often, but it just was, it felt right on this one. I think it's going to be the best approach and it's going to look pretty good. Now I'm going to fit the dial on the top. Again, make sure you have the washer on. If you were doing something like this, easy to forget. Be like, oh no, now I gotta go put the, take it all apart, put the washer back on. The issue with the date window is when moving from one movement to another is are the dimensions close enough that you don't see other bits and parts around the date you want shown. A little bit of the 26, a little bit of the 28, how much to the left or right. Those dimensions are gonna be different from movement to movement. It's really close on these two. So I'll be able to get away with it looking okay. That's what the customer wanted and it'll be fine. So now we're gonna fit the dial on top. This is a situation where having the holder that fits a particular movement. This is the Ronda 515. Also works for the ETA at the 2800 series, the Soleta 200 series. Having the right tools and movement holder make certain work a lot easier. So we're aiming for the 27 here. And I'm sorry if this goes out of frame for a second or I cut away for a second. I've got to get a little closer with my magnification. Okay, so this is what I mean by it being almost exact. And hopefully you'll be able to see it a little bit. And this is going to depend on the angle of the watch. But look at the center hole. Notice how it is exactly in the middle. And yeah, you can really judge that by eye. At least I think so. It's pretty good. It's in the middle. <laughs> but you notice, see just... A barely a tip of the two on the 28th and a little bit of the 26 above but it's pretty close where once we get this framed up in the case that's the smallest of worries when you're moving between a conversion like this of one movement to another it is not worth the pain and suffering to try to make a new dial or a custom dial or refit the dial feed like this will work this old of a watch this loved of a watch it almost looks natural if you've got the same amount little bit showing at the top and the bottom least of the worries in the world trust me you can maybe barely see a sliver on the left and the right Again, it's just a bigger date window than what this movement has expected but we're talking less than a millimeter right in any direction tolerances are so tight on everything regarding watches date windows being one of those things center holes being another you know what this looks good have you seen my video on making custom watch hands yikes that one Woo. Just go watch it if you haven't. It is a, a lesson in resilience, but at least watch hands can be bought fairly easily through other manufacturers, you know, suppliers and whatnot. But wow, just even just working with them is difficult. But here's the process we're going to go through. Again, I've covered this in some other videos, so I'm not going to cover every single detail. I've got the hour hand. This is a 1.2 millimeter that goes on the Ronda 515. So we'll put the hour hand on first and get it set. One of the things that you have to consider with the hour hand and placing it on the movement is you want to get the date to the point right before it flips. Because when you set the hour and the minute hand on there, you want it so that when it hits 12 o'clock, the date flips. So you have to get the date movement right before it flips, place the hands, and then it looks correct. You forget that step, then you have to remove the hands Again, glossy dial. You don't want to muck with that too much. You'll mark up the dial pretty easily. Best case scenario, do it right the first time. What we'll do is pull the movement out to the time setting. And although you can't see the hour wheel moving around, you can see the quick set for the date. Okay, let's go to two. That sounds fun. So we'll pop that out to the time setting position. And although you can't see the center wheel turning, I can't either. We want to move this until it's just about to flip. You'll be able to see the wheel turn a little bit before it does so. Look how good that is. So I have the hour hand on. Again, date just flipped to three. You see the plastic tip here is 1.2. That's the size of the hour hand diameter. One of the things is that helps with one of these devices is it's 1.2, meaning it helps kind of protect a little bit against pushing too far with anything. You could always push too far. So once I get this hand fitted down, then I want to put the minute hand right on top of it at 12 o'clock and then everything should be synced up nicely. 
but I'll have to look under magnification and see, okay, how close is it sitting to the dial? Is there clearance for the, the logo? It's a little bit different on this one is the second hand, which is the original second hand, which I've had to straighten up a little bit because whenever it was removed by someone else, it was bent up a little bit, but I want to reuse it. We've got clearances to make with the logo for the hour hand and clearances to make with the other hands on the applied markers. That's the key again with picking hands that might fit on this particular combination of parts. All right, so once this is on correctly, you can see I've run a few laps. Whenever we go to set it, get the height of the hands, look how close that is. It's like razor thin between the markers and the two hands. You don't want anything scraping against anything else because even though you can turn it with your hand, if it's slightly scraping something, you might be able to turn it with your hand as you manually adjust the crown but the torque power of the battery as it's moving the hour wheel or minute wheel, those things around, won't have enough strength. It'll just get hung up. So just because you can turn it doesn't mean, any, so you have to listen. I listen. Is there any scraping? Is there any scraping? Usually we'll get a flip of the date in the last five minutes. You want it as close as possible to midnight. You know, if it looks like it's visually just a little off, so here we're at 11, you can see the date starting to flip. As we get close, you might get a little flip a little bit before. That's fine, but that's pretty good setting. So now we're gonna get into the second hand. Here we have the original Moss style hands. You can see the loom was chopped up on them a little bit. A little more of a squared look. They look good. I can reuse these, reloom them or something. But really the best second hand to use on this was the original one, but in it being removed, it was bent up a little bit. I've tried to straighten it up. It's not perfectly polished, but I've repolished it a little bit and we're going to reattach it. It is a 0.2 millimeter diameter, tiny, tiny. You can see there's a little bit of a bend to it. I'm going to try to straighten just a little bit more and then we'll work on getting it on the watch. And the second hand, pretty close to where it needs to be. It's almost exact. You know, you get a quartz movement. Some of them are going to be off a little bit, like not hitting the markers exactly. I like it if it's a little bit leading, but it might, that's my own personal. I like this one is at about that. Depends on the markers and how close they are. It's an older dial, so they're not all perfect either. So pretty close where it needs to be, the minute hand sitting on. Nothing's interfering with other hands as they glide over the top of each other. Really thin margins there. And now we just got to get this thing in the case with the custom holder that I created, drafted, 3D printed, one step closer. The hardest part of what is left is fitting the stem to the old crown. I'm gonna to have to use some Loctite on the crown itself. It's a push-pull crown that has a little bit of a threading to it. So it's got a little bit of a give, a little push, so it can secure to the case with a screw down. So to get this new thinner quartz movement to the right height for the stem hole, you need to create a custom 3D printed spacer. This will sit dial side, you can see it's black, so it'll match pretty well with the dial. You won't really see it unless you look really close. Of course, I've already tested this. Look how easily that slid down inside there. You can see it. it sits on that internal ledge. And it's all about raising all of this up to the right level. So what I've done is I've cleaned up the dial on the inside of the case a little bit more. You can see it ticking away in there. Flipped around, I've put the spacer in, which along with the holders custom printed to raise the movement to the right height so that the stem hole is at the right location. And it's looking pretty good. I, I tested that maybe like a month or two ago. I don't even know anymore. It's been a project that's been in the works for a while, taking a little bit longer than I wanted to. But now we've got the movement in there, put the custom holder in, and then we can work on doing the stem, which is really the last step uh, after that. Just the case back screw down. So let's put the holder in place. It should snap down nicely. And then we'll start working on the stem. Whatever the reason, the original stem had some adhesive clump on the end of it that was holding it inside, but it was rotating freely. Generally, I'm surprised it would stay in whenever you pulled it out. It wasn't okay with that. And of course, it's just an older crown. It's a little bit worn down. So I went about finding some replacements. And believe it or not, some of these exist out there. I got these from the Philippines of all places. 
and it's a really small crown. About nothing else is going to fit this, <laughs> to be honest. So the interior threads for the case, but it's a tap tin. That's the size of the threading for this crown, which is a pretty standard size. The trick is to use some stem cutters, get this down to the right length, and then I use a file to file it down a little bit. I have a video on doing that with stems, but you got to get it measured right. Always cut off a little bit less and then file down or just trim a little bit more. Don't trim off too much. You can always take a little bit more length off, but you can't add it back on uh, without an extender. That's just more work. Once the length is exactly right, I'll put a little Loctite on the end, and so it stays on more permanently. You can always you know, heat it up and, and take it off, detach the two if you wanted to, uh, but get the length right and get the stem in it, and then we can set the time, make sure it's all working correct, and then it's off to the customer. Okay, so here we are. I put the Loctite on the stem and crown connection, screwed it in, letting it dry, set the time. So I'll just judge over the next day, make sure timekeeping is working okay. And the customer has a bezel they're going to put on this. Uh, so I didn't have to worry about that aspect, but we're all sealed up and ready to go and look at this beautiful thing ticking away. Crystal could use a replacement too, but just wasn't something I was going to do in this project uh, at this moment. But that could be done at some point if the person wants to do so. And yeah, now it's ready to go. Let's check out. Well, there's another combination I can add to my list on watchcomplications.com. Flexible use of the Ronda 515. It's a great little $15 quartz movement. can go in a lot of cases. Someone wanted it in the old Seiko 023, you know, great. And that case was used on a lot of Seiko watches. I'll add that to my site. If it's something you're interested in, let me know. But just peruse the site, to, uh, you know, the channel and all the other stuff I have linked below. Hopefully you find something interesting. Hopefully you subscribe and stick around. Again, don't forget that like if you enjoyed what you saw here. To all my watch monitors, makers, and just people following. I've got some reviews coming. I'm um, kind of getting back on the wagon here, I hope. I know I say that like every time. But no, I've got some stuff I've got to get out and I'm kind of starting to get where I have some capacity to do so. So thanks for joining me and I'm out.